It's a big world out there. The baby was born yesterday. Hey. Fair warning, this video is not for the lactose intolerant, vegans, or anyone else who may still not yet know where baby cows come from. Okay, now that they're gone, let's have some fun on the farm. <laughs> Poor thing can barely walk. Look at him go. First, let's backtrack for a moment. Remember that a few hours before inviting myself onto this pasture puppy palace. Hey, are you taking care of the moo cows? Let me see those ladies. I was at Hoover's Dairy. I can't produce a video about the small town milkman without the real stars of the show. These lactating ladies. Just kiss all those noses. Mm. And these two, Nelson and Barb, members of a disappearing tribe that make up just 2% of the US population who feeds the other 98%. These are my unsung heroes. She's ready to go. These are our farmers. Mind you, I have no existing invitation here, but Nelson is more than happy to show off his milk models, who, for 365 days a year, are responsible for supplying Hoover's Dairy. They are fat, sassy, and eager to either pose for the camera try and eat it, or shoot projectile green poop at it. Cow pie. Once I get the footage I need to finish off the Hoover's Milkman video, that I already posted, find it, watch it, go now, I am on my way until Nelson points out this squeezable field puppy wobbling around under the watchful eye of his teenage cousins who like to snack on red hair, specifically little guy here was born yesterday. He can barely walk. My life is complete. I am not coming home. I'm just going to put him in the van and give him the best life that a dairy cow can have. He's peeing. Okay, now I'm ready to go. Now that I am happily and heavily perfumed in manure and heifer snot, off to the van, except before I really leave, I just have one more question and then I'll get out of Nelson's way. Why is this cow dancing? The answer is she's pregnant and she's shaking her big old backside to shift what appears to be an enormous baby moo into place. Maybe it was the expression on my face, or maybe because I squealed with delight, or maybe it was watching me give an unsolicited motivational cow birthing speech to his heifer. But Nelson and Barb, who 15 minutes ago had a complete stranger in their barn, extended an invitation to me not only to be present for the big moment, but park my van out back and stay the night so that I don't miss it. I don't remember what my response was. I think it was something like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, I'm so excited, oh my God, a baby cow, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Now that we're all family, we've got time. Time to teach me how to be a dairy farmer and a dairy doula. Lesson one, you will never work harder. Your entire existence is committed to the farm because your community and country depend on it. And you will likely never be thanked for it. You gotta be up mornings to milk them, and then you gotta milk them in the evening, like 4.30 in the morning and then 4.30 at night, mm -hmm. two times a day, seven days a week. There's no holidays or anything. Most people have no clue where their food comes from. Kids will tell you it comes from the grocery store. Adults can't tell you where the nearest farm is. That lack of agricultural education can, in many cases, lead to some strong opinions that are not backed by actual experience, but rather something they've seen online. Now don't get me wrong, there are genuine cases of cruelty that have been exposed. But the collateral damage of that is that the rest of our ag community gets unjustly labeled. Crucified for their work, yet without them, we have no way to feed the sheer majority of this country. 
I can't speak for big corporate farms, but I will be a voice for people like Nelson and Barb who are busting their tails only to be met by phony farm hand applicants who usually trip up trying to hide their hidden camera. Yeah, it happens. It happens often. Farm families don't go on for generations because they don't love their cows. They go on because they do. It gets in your blood, you can't leave it. Nelson is 71 and born on this dairy farm that his father and mother worked their entire lives. Come on! <laughs> go, puppy, go! What's the matter? You use a scale, man. <laughs> When I was in seventh grade, I was up helping my dad milk cows before I went to grade school. And since then, Nelson has known few days when the alarm clock didn't go off at 3.45 a.m. I went to one basketball game on a Saturday for, uh, for my school in eighth grade. Mm -hmm. And he said, that's your first one and your last one. Why? Well, we didn't have time for that. How many children can say that today? Everybody goes to college now. I never went to college. And everybody wow. goes to college, gets a big degree, gets a big debt, and hope for the best. I assume that his two granddaughters would be taking Nelson's place. But with a nostalgic and somewhat sad look in his eyes, he admitted that he would hardly encourage the idea. The manual labor is brutal, the pay is paltry, and the fact of the matter is, our small family-owned farms are dying. There was a hundred and some farmers, dairy farmers, in Niagara County, and I think we're down to 20. There's at least 10 farmers right in my area, just 10 miles right around here, that they all went out of business. Which explains why Hoover's Dairy told me it's getting harder and harder to find local operations to keep all those vintage glass bottles full. Before dawn, Nelson and Barb wake and walk a herd into the barn. One by one, set the suction cups in place while the ladies eat breakfast and gossip about Nelson. Yeah, they got, well, they're like women, they got their minds of their own. <laughs> cue, cue, the, cue the big woman. Each cow produces about seven gallons a day, but when you think about how many gallons are sitting on just one of your grocery store shelves alone, not considering an entire country of shelves, that's nothing. Which is why dairy farming takes zero breaks. These queens work for you. They're, they're smart animals. I mean, they'll come into the barn and they'll almost pick their same spot all the time. Their collective stash gets combined into a tank and in the middle of the night, a large trailer arrives to transfer the creamy merchandise to Hoover's for pasteurization. Let me say it again. No part of any of this ever stops. That said, let's address some misconceptions I've already heard. No, the cows do not live their entire life locked into the stabilizers in Nelson's barn. What do you do to your unruly child when you need to feed him, clean him, and care for him? You put him in a high chair, a stabilizer, not to abuse him, but to keep him in one place while you do what you need to do. Given the machinery, the demand for production, and safety of all, cows are locked in. I'm pretty sure if I asked you to pull on a 1,500 pound teat attached to a lethal set of kicking legs, the first thing you would ask for is for the cow to be held in place. The stabilizers fully rotate and when milking for the day is done, bye -bye. Have a good evening. they are unlatched and the moody brood runs back out into the field to play. And unlike many other places, even after their years of milking dries up, Nelson and Barb let them live out their natural life in the pasture. Something of a cow retirement home. Barb tells that part of the story best. Here's my boyfriend. 
and she smiles like a mother whose baby's just graduated. To get me away from staring at Mama Moo's backside like I'm waiting for lottery numbers to pop out, Barb strategically distracts me with my favorite sparkly thing, a decaying building. Very well done, Barb. The Wurlitzer building took about 60 years to build, starting in the late 1800s, and housed a world-class organ building company whose musical devices played all around the world. Later left to erode, the monumental structure has now been tapped for renovation. But Barb knew better. Barb knew I'd be seduced by the spaces still untouched and play I did. Distracting me with decay and a special buffalo-only concoction called sponge candy, I almost forgot about my little furry cow godchild that's soon to be born. Almost. The sun is setting and together Nelson and Barb muck out the barn as they've done every night all the decades they've been married. I'd love to help, but since I'm more of the cheerleading section here, with my Tinkerbell bathrobe on, I begin my overnight labor and delivery rounds. It's about 11 p.m. and I don't mean to be an overprotective dairy doula but I think I'm gonna go check on her. Everybody on the farm is asleep and I will never forgive myself if I miss this. She's being a bit stubborn. <laughs> like nothing was happening all afternoon, but but my baby is about to pop. So let, let's just go, let's just go check on her. What are you doing, big girl? I don't know. I don't know what the signs of early stage cow labor are, but she is breathing pretty heavy. I don't know. I don't want to go wake them up if she's not ready, but... Oh, this is so exciting! You can see in her stomach that calf just crawling around in there. I, it is wild. It is amazing human or animal what their bodies can do but he is jumping or she jumping all around in there <laughs> i got like eight alarms set for 3 a.m i don't want to miss this she's breathing really heavy but i don't know what that means because every time i ask her she's an answer i have been warned from my friends in north carolina who are farmers that i should wear gloves and expect it to be very messy but my expectation is glitter and a backup choir good night <laughs> Three o'clock in the morning. Let's go check on Pretty Domu. Still no baby. Back to the van. Her other nurse stands guard, the farm's German shepherd who has not left her side since she went into labor. Well, at 3 a.m., she was doing a whole lot of nothing, so I came back to bed, and I figured they get up really early. I do not. So I thought, well, if they go in there and she's doing the damn thing, they'll wake me up. And nobody woke me up, and it's 8. So either she pushed that thing out, <laughs> and we all missed it, or it hasn't happened yet. So, uh... I don't know, let's go see. I guess you can't really predict these things, but I really need her to hurry up because her birth is very difficult on me. Good morning, ladies. So fat and sassy and pooping everywhere. There she is. Still doing the dance. No baby. My big girl, where's your baby? Where is your baby? Yeah. Uh, maybe we should go do aerobics together. A watched cow doesn't dilate, said no one ever. I am smelly and sleep deprived, so I'm really leaving this time to clean up, with strict instructions to Nelson to call the moment she gets moving. Damn it, that sneaky cow. I finally went home to do some editing. I'm speeding, this is not safe. Because she wasn't doing anything. I mean, the the Nelson put on a glove that went all the way up to his head and 
gave her a gynecologist exam that forever changed how I see my visits there. Woo! And she would like the calf was way down and nothing was happening and then Nelson laughed and I left and we're like, ah, oh, we'll check back later. Well, Nelson took a quick trip out while I was gone and she started pushing. And so he just told me that like the calf is pretty much born. And so I think I'm going to miss it. I'm so mad. Oh, it's fine. We're still going to get to see a baby cow, but what a sneaky cow. I knew she was going to wait till I left. I knew it. Women are so tactical. All right. Well, let's go meet a baby. Ah! Oh God. I hope I don't get pulled over. From the sight of those not so little hooves alone, Nelson and Barb know it's a bull. They big. This is Mama Moo's first baby. He's huge and poor girl is having a hell of a time getting him out. Yes, the cow stays in the stabilizer for birth just like you willingly lay down on a table and prop your feet in stirrups to birth a human. That's hardly helping you. It's helping the doctor minimize risk. This is no different. You got an epidural. She gets a delivery team of grown men helping her out. Come on, one more time, one more time, we got it. Open the air valve. Just like a real one, huh? Or a human one. Yeah. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Welcome to Nelson. With an all hands on deck effort, this little, or rather huge, bundle of big eyed bull plopped out into the barn looking just as shocked to see me as I was to see his slimy, bewildered eyes slowly open. Meanwhile, the milking operation doesn't miss a beat and with all the equipment and cow shuffling going on, baby bull is scooted over to the hayfield safe side of mom. Her abrasive tongue will not only clean him off, but open his pores and stimulate his body to get moving. Nelson is in full-time midwife mode, getting her buckets of water and pumping out the first critical drops of milk to feed him. Now I know in movies, you've seen a wobbly calf alone in a barn nursing on his mother, but this isn't Hollywood. It's the reality of dairy farming and the demand on output. It's hardly safe for his squishy little body to be moving around her when right next door, milking machinery is going left and right. Speaking of squishy, did you know calves' hooves are almost foamy at birth? It's wild. I suppose that helps mom out, but the moment they touch air, they start to harden. Barb gives him a bottle of mom's nutrient-rich milk, and I sit back on the hay in absolute wonder at what's gone on under this roof the past 24 hours. Everyone takes off to finish milking the cows, and that's when I get the biggest gift of all during my time in small town Sanborn, New York. After a few failed wiggles to stand, Baby Bull calls it a day, and with a little vocal coaching from Mom, lets out his very first moo. Note his reaction, a bit shocked to hear his own mighty roar. Now starts mom's career as a dairy cow and baby bull will either become a baby daddy to heifers across the land or become a steer, castrated cow raised for meat. I know, hands just went over hearts, I get it. But you know that hamburger steak and sandwich meat you like so much? That all had big soulful eyes once too. That's not evil agriculture, that's consumer demand. The cows are about to be let out for the night, so Baby Bull is shuttled by his uncle into the heifer condo, where his now two-day-old compadre is waiting for him. There you go. 
I kiss my teenage ladies goodbye because I really do need to get going now. I can't believe what my quick stop for a few shots of video turned into. As far as I'm concerned, I have a new family in Sanborn, New York, who can absolutely count on reunions for years to come. Days like today are rather routine for Nelson and Barb. They may never understand how special every second of it was to me. This story isn't about milk or a cow being born. It's about people like Nelson and Barb who do it every day without anyone ever stopping to notice. <laughs> this story is about the people we need in this world and in our communities. You don't need a celebrity. You don't need a pop star. You could probably do without many a politician. And truthfully, you really don't need some smart mouth redhead on YouTube either. He loves me. You need a doctor. You need an officer or fireman. You need our farm families. We all need them. We need their work ethic and their willingness to feed a nation. Give me every American and put them in this barn with those peeing, pooping, need to be milked cows. Tell them they must tend to them 365 days a year in blazing heat or sub-zero temperatures for a few cents a gallon. Tell them they will never be Instagram stars and their customers will never thank them, but instead usually look down upon them, if not outright condemn them. And yet despite all that, tell them the country can't exist without them. Tell me how many Americans are now left standing in that barn. Just a few. We call them our farmers.